Is this the end? No, seriously. Are we living through the end times of capitalism as we know it? Well, according to the Greek economist and former Greek finance minister, for a total of six months, Yanis Varoufakis, we're changing the game of making money within tech. And he's calling it techno-feudalism. And I have to say, I find his points very interesting. Even though a Greek economist has the natural authority of an ice hockey player from Jamaica. To really understand what he's on about, we need to answer two key questions. One, what is capitalism? And two, what is feudalism? Let's start with the latter. And the best way to do that is to rewind the clock a few years. More specifically, we need to go all the way back to the feudal society of the medieval ages. Location Europe. History lesson, yay! Let's travel back to 12th century England, where the feudal system shaped society. This was a world of manners, lords and serfs, where land and loyalty defined life. Which of course is totally different from the way things work in today's England. Right? Right? At the center of all this was the manor the estate of a local lord. Let's call him Lord Richard, a noble who managed the land granted by the king in return for military service. His wealth and power came from control over the land and the people who worked it. Under Lord Richard were knights like Sir Thomas, last time, I promise, who pledged loyalty and military support in exchange for land. This land, known as a fief, was not just a source of income, but it was also a means to maintain their own retinue, definition here please, of soldiers and to support their household. Most people, you and I for example, were serfs, working the land and providing food in return for protection. Most serfs lived in simple cottages, farming small plots to feed their families while also working the lord's fields. Their lives were pretty bound by the seasons, with uh, planting, tending and harvesting dictating their daily routines. Despite their hard work, serfs had little freedom and were often subject to the lord's demands. The manor was largely self-sufficient, with craftsmen like blacksmiths, millers and bakers supporting the community. The economy was based on barter and trade, with goods and services exchanged locally. Coin was pretty rare, and most transactions involved direct exchange of goods. The church, led by Father Gregory, was central to community life, offering spiritual guidance and support. It was also a place where records were kept, and literacy was maintained. The church collected tithes, which were a form of tax paid by the villagers, to support the clergy and church activities. Despite hardships, festivals and community events provided moments of relief and unity. These events were often tied to the agricultural calendar and religious observances, reinforcing social bonds and cultural traditions. If you enjoyed the video so far, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps grow the channel and we're pretty new to this YouTube stuff. So getting some feedback from you really, really helps. Okay, now you understand the core concepts of how the feudal system works, which means you've gathered the prerequisite information for two things. Number one, understanding how Westeros works in Game of Thrones, and number two, understanding what techno-feudalism actually is. Before we dive any deeper into Giannis' theory, let's quickly recap what we mean when we're saying capitalism. Capitalism is an economic model where people and businesses own and run things that make money. Goods and services are created and sold for profit, with businesses competing against each other. For example, a bakery owned by a person sells bread and cakes for a profit, and it competes with other bakeries in town to attract customers. And that's not so difficult to understand, except if you're Chinese or Russian maybe. Really hope my windows don't become Russian all of a sudden. So what exactly is techno-feudalism? Let's have a quick study test, yay, to see if you can understand the concept just by remembering the story about Lord Richard and his friends, with some hints from me of course. What do these companies have in common? More specifically, what is similar about their business models? Yep, these are all Lord Richards. These tech giants are the feudal lords. And here comes the big revelation. They do not produce goods to sell. They're building platforms, or cloud fiefs, that users, serfs, provide labor to without direct compensation, which increases the value of these companies. To be more specific, Varoufakis asserts that capitalism, characterized by profit-driven motives, has been replaced by techno-feudalism, where wealth extraction is driven by rent rather than profit. But what do these businesses own that's really powerful? It's data. These companies own and control immense amounts of data, which is the most valuable resource in the digital economy. This control allows them to extract value from users and smaller businesses, similar to how feudal lords extracted value from the serfs. If you've ever heard the phrase, you are the product when we're talking about social media, this is exactly that. So what are the implications of this and why should you care? First of all, it's a threat to democracy. The concentration of power in the hands of a few tech companies poses a significant threat to democratic governance and individual freedoms. 
Secondly, there are many social implications, especially regarding privacy and surveillance. The dominance of tech giants raises significant concerns about privacy and surveillance. Users' data is continuously harvested and monetized, often without their explicit consent, leading to a loss of privacy and autonomy. Also, geopolitical tensions where the competition between the US and China over cloud capital and digital infrastructure is a key factor in the new Cold War dynamics, affecting global stability and international relations. Okay, so what can we do to stop it? Enter Europe! Words I thought I'd never say in this context, where feudalism has been attacked and abolished in many countries before. Usually, Europe elects to play the war card, but in some countries we call it a revolution, for example in France. And in other countries we just call it civil war. Either way, murder is the answer. Or maybe, just maybe, there's another way to solve it. And again, the EU has been in the forefront on this. As is well known by now, the EU doesn't do any technical innovation or anything like that. I mean, the two biggest businesses either sell fat loss drugs to Americans or purses to Asian people. But in addition to that, we are really good at regulating stuff. And GDPR and the AI Act might actually help break up the power concentration in the techno-feudal system. Our hero Yanis suggests similar solutions, such as Varoufakis advocates for placing algorithms and digital platforms under democratic control to ensure they serve public interests rather than corporate profits. This could involve regulatory measures and public ownership of key digital infrastructure. At the end of his book, Varoufakis calls for a cloud rebellion to overthrow techno-feudalism. This involves using laws, technology and human rights frameworks to dismantle the monopolistic power of tech giants and redistribute control over digital platforms. But there's also this last option. Maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't listen to ice hockey players from Jamaica. Now that we almost said something nice about Europe, why don't you have a look at why they suck at business? In this video, we're looking under the hood to understand why business in Europe is no bueno, as the French would say.